The first thing you should check when testing for measurement invariance is configural invariance. This means you will test for whether the items with which you measure the construct are indicators of that same construct in both groups. If there is configural invariance, it means that the indicators of the construct, the items with which we measure the construct, are indicators of the construct in both groups. In the example on the screen, the two graphs on the left-hand side of the screen represent uh, graphs where the item score is predictor of the latent score for both groups. So these graphs show configural invariance. The latent score is not observed. It is not simply average of all the answers on the scale because that would be observed total score. The latent score represents, so to speak, the quantity of the construct that each individual has. It is obtained using maximum likelihood estimation. The latent scores are such that they maximize the likelihood that the process described by the model we have drawn produces the data. In the example on the right side of the screen, the item score is related to the latent score only for group 1 or the group represented with the yellow line and not for group 2, which is the group represented with the blue line. So this graph is a representation of configural non-invariance or non-equivalence. Besides an item not loading on a construct in one of the groups, configural non-invariance may also mean that an item loads on the latent factor differently in the two groups. For example, in one of the group, one or more items load on a different factor or cross load on both factors. So what can you do if you have non-invariance at this stage? Well, you can test the model without the non-invariant item, but in that case, you will only have partial structural equivalence, meaning only some of the items load as expected in both groups. You can also assume that the construct is non-equivalent and choose not to pursue any further analysis with the data. Let's see how to test for configural invariance in AMOS. To test for configural invariance, first you need to draw the model. Then we will test for measurement invariance across gender. Before we start the analysis, we need to tell AMOS that there is going to be more than one group for analysis. So to do that, go to Analyze and then Manage Groups. And then you'll be asked to name the first group. In our case, it's going to be male and the second group female. Now we need to load the data set and um, associate data points with each group. So the data is in the same data set for both groups. That's data set one. And I need to specify a grouping variable, which is gender in this case and also a grouping value. So in my data sets, males are coded as one. So I need to tell that to Amos. So I will choose here one. And the females are coded with two, which I also need to tell Amos. And the people coded with three are those who have answered others and we're not interested in them in this example. So I'm going to click OK and then the model is ready to be estimated. So I'm going to click on calculate estimates and request the output, which is uh, on view and then text output. And first I'm going to look at the estimates. They're shown separately for the male group and the female group. And as I can see, everything is good here. All the items load on their respective factors as hypothesized in both groups. So now I will go to check the model fit. Uh, we will look at the chi-square and its degrees of freedom. 
as well as the comparative fit index, Tucker Lewis index, and the root mean square error of approximation. So, what I'm going to do now is write down these values in a table. And these are the model fit values calculated for both groups simultaneously. And these are going to be my baseline values against which I will compare the next model, which is going to be the metric invariance model. So let's transfer the values in our table. As you can see, I have transferred the values for the model fit indices for the configural model in this table. The cells with uh, the sign delta in them are denoting the change in the model fit indices. And because this is the baseline model, uh, I'm not comparing it to anything. So those cells need to stay empty.